uh, uh, welcome speech. Uh, so I uh, welcome Professor Dr. R. Manivonan. Uh, you see here. So I will give him a small introduction about him. Dr. Madhivanan born on 1st July 1936. Uh, he, he is a doctorate from the University of Madras and he did his BA from Regional College of Education, Mysore. He is uh, also MA Tamil Literature from University of Madras. He received a big one from KVSS Sendamal College. With big one meaning, uh, the mo meaning quiet. Uh, in, in English. He knows eight languages. He uh, fluently he speaks Tamil, Malayalam, Kannada, Telugu, Hindi, Finnish, Sanskrit and English. Uh, I will go through the different posts he held. Uh, he was the chief editor, director for Tamil Etymology Dictionary Project, Chennai. And then also he was assistant director in the project. He was assistant director and director in uh, Tamil Etymological Dictionary Project. He was assistant professor in Government Arts College, Salem. He was a Tamil Pandit in Government Arts College, Salem, as well as Government High School, Marandahali. I will go through some of his uh, books in different uh, areas. Under etymology, he has written books called Pavanar's Ayuderi. It's a Pavanar's methodology of etymological research. So Pavanar uh, it doesn't cooperate with me. Uh, it's right at time. Pavanar. He is a great scholar and legend. Every double people know about him. We had the general five assistants very close to Devanaya Pavanar and Dr. Madhivanan is the primary uh, assistant for Devanaya Pavanar. He is the only one who stayed with him uh, all, his, all his time. So, uh, Madhivan, uh, uh, Madhivanan's knowledge and uh, linguistic skills helped Devanaya Pavanar a lot. That's why Devanaya Pavanar kept him with him all the time. So, uh, linguistics meaning most of the people may not know. So, linguistics uh, is about uh, finding the root of words. Uh, for example, in English you have words like uh, visit, visit, uh, visitor, visa, visiting. And uh, if you look at the root word, the root word is from the Tamil language. We use the word vidi. Vidi means uh, ice. So, from this ice, these English words came. came. And there are several other languages you can connect how this will be turned into vision, visit, such such words like that. So yeah, research on these kind of words and connecting these kind of words is called uh, linguistics uh, and epi epitomologies. That's the exact meaning. And he has written uh, grammar books, ancient civilization books, as well as history, poetry, literature, glossary. And he did translation from several other languages. He wrote Andhra, Andhra Nata Ahalanudu. It's a Tamil translation of uh, Prakrit work. Gata Sati. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he did tours in Malaysia and Singapore, 1997, United States of America, 2002, that's uh, 18 years ago. He came here, uh, he gave a speech in uh, University of California, uh, and uh, he went to Finland in 2011, he went to Kuwait in 2012, and then this is his next visit, he came to Chicago and presented his research work in uh, World Tamil Conference. And uh, I will also provide a brief summary of his prizes and awards. Uh, Sanja Oath plate and certificate from the government of Tamil Nadu for having worked in the Kumari Kanda film production for the 5th World Tamil Conference, Madurai, in 1981. Merit certificate presented by the State Bank of India for having worked in the Tamil publication of banking technical terms of Tamil glossary. And uh, uh, 
First prize winner in Tirupal competition, TBS Sindhamad College, Tirupanandar for reciting all the 130 couplets of the Tirupural. So Tirupural is our, uh, uh, our Veda for all the Tamil people. It's like a, like a Bible for us. So we have that uh, 1330 uh, verses. So it's very hard to memorize it. And uh, our Professor Dr. Marivanan, uh, he received prize for that. And he received a Peran Mayala Virudu, which means the great school scholar, awarded by Fedna, uh, USA. Fedna is a uh, federation of North American Tamil uh, organizations. So they gave the great, great school scholar award. Also, because he wrote uh, very detailed uh, history books, he was awarded Varlatu Vodi Nyayi, meaning uh, the brightest son of history award by Vallalar Mandram uh, in Malaysia, 1997. And uh, what other scholars wrote about Dr. Madhivanan? Uh, Tamil etymological dictionary is prepared on very extensive scale and it will, when complete, be a remarkable contribution to Tamil studies and indeed Dravidian studies in general. It is written by Professor T. Bordo from London. And, uh, on, on the whole, the work by Dr. Madhivanan shows that he has enough scientific qualification. That's from uh, his point examiner of Dr. Madhivanan's PhD thesis. Decipher of Hindu script in Times of India, this game. Times of India is uh, one of the uh, famous uh, dailies uh, or a magazine in India. The Hindu script is Dravidian according to noted language archaeologist Dr. R. Madhivanan who has deciphered more than 3,000 Hindu seals and inscriptions. So, uh, there are several quotes from several IAS, several judges, uh, very honorable people from India. Um, so, uh, I have shared most of the details with uh, several of you people through uh, EY as well as in the WhatsApp. So, we are very glad to uh, have Professor Dr. Madhivanan here and uh, I request uh, uh, Mr. John to give a moment though for Dr. Madhivanan. We have Honorable uh, Ms. Nimisha Shukla. Nimisha Shukla is a program manager in IT industry. She spent her childhood in central India and is an electrical engineer by qualification. In her career, she has worked for companies like Intel Corporation and JP Morgan Chase. She practices hot yoga, is trained in Kathak dance, and has a passion for traveling, having visited 14 countries. International travel has given her a great perspective and a sense of appreciation of cultural heritage. This piqued her interest in legacy of various cultures. So we are very honored to welcome uh, Mrs. Nimisha Shukla and uh, I would like uh, Mr. Kalibay to give a moment to
So next we will start with the uh, Hindi book release even. So like uh, uh, Mr. Zinisha who released the book to uh, his friend, uh, to her friend, to her friend Manish. Please come on. Television completely open. Uh, next, uh, we will release the English book. So, uh, I request uh, Mr. Mohan Dasari to release the English book. Just a small token of appreciation. Yes. I am grateful to you. Uh, 
the younger generation, especially from the Indian community. So I don't think there are many people that are doing what Madhavan Sir is doing. So for that, I think uh, it's what he is doing is greatly commendable and remarkable. So for that, uh, I thank you, Madhavan Sir, for what you are doing. And it is you are a great inspiration for a lot of folks like me. Um, and with that, so I'm, I'm wishing you all the best. And thank you, sir. Success. <laughs> thank you very much. Respected chief guests, respected chief guests, friends, as a prelude, I like to recite a prayer song. Tamile, Taaye, Vadakam, Tamile, Taaye, Vadakam. Tai pilai ura wama unekum jenekum. Tai pilai ura wama unekum jenekum. Tamie, taie, wanekum. It means salutations to the mother language which is considered as goddess. The relationship between you and me is a long-lasting binding and friendship, is the meaning of the poem. Now, let us come to the subject. In the Indus civilization is the pride of India, not only to pride of India, is a gift and asset to the ancient civilizations of the world community. For the last 1000 years, for the last 100 years, more than 100 scholars tried to decipher the Indus script. The Egypt from hieroglyph was deciphered by Champollion. After all, he was a school teacher. He deciphered it completely. He got a Rosetta stone. Only after 50 years, the scholars accepted it. Even though he has deciphered, it took 50 years. But for the past three decades, I am at it. And I have completely deciphered the 5,000 seals and inscriptions. So how are Dr. Asko Parpola? All the world community is invited to Asko Parpola. He proved that Indus civilization is Dravidian beyond any trace of doubt. And then, he, issue, he published three volumes, collections from India, collections from Pakistan, and collections from West Asia. The total of inscriptions in the three volumes were 4,559. And I, did, I carried on field work. I climbed many mountains and collected the inscriptions, indescript inscriptions among rock art in South India. In one district alone, I collected 50 through indescript inscriptions in the rock art, and then in pottery. So, even on that surface level, we are able to collect Indus inscriptions. We need not dig. But all the channel key in so many places. As a result of the excavation of very little extent, Many inscriptions in Indus script have been discovered. So, I have proved in my book that Indus civilization is a pan-Indian civilization. Not only that, that the people who lived in India before the advent of Rigvedic Aryans were completely Dravidians, proto dravidians The language spoken in India was completely Dravidian. There are, I have quoted nine reasons to prove that Tamil was the only language spoken throughout India. I will show one or two sites here. 
Rigveda contains Tamil words. What does it mean? In North India, Tamil was spoken. And the next concrete reason is the Aryans entered India neither with the script nor scripture. They don't know to read and write. They recite Vedas, the sacred words. It is a revered collection. The whole world praised it. The Sanskritists protected the Sanskrit and the Sanskrit protected them. The Sanskrit promoted Sanskrit and the Sanskrit promoted them. Whereas the poor Indians, the native language speakers did not protect the language. The language did not protect them. The regional languages, not all the regional languages, the regional languages did not promote the regional language. Even the central government also not allotting so much fund to the development of the regional languages. So the regional languages did not protect the regional people. But let us go to the Indus Valley period. All were educated people. Even a potter is an educated person. He inscribed the name of the, some names in the pottery. Suppose it is a Mary or something else. He will write the name of the bride and bridegroom on the pottery. So, it is a education as fully blown. It has fully spread all over the country. So, even a poor man was able to read and write. The three R's they will definitely say reading, writing, and arithmetic. So all the three skills were there during the Indus civilization. And uh, when the Aryans came to, Rigvedic people came to India, they saw these people, the black people were writing something on palm leaves, copper plate and all that. They wondered, they got surprised. They didn't have a word in Sanskrit for writing, to write. In Tamil, it is Yeludu. Ilakku. Ilakku that means to write on a copper plate, make it some deep impression. When you are writing on a cloth or a pottery, it is said to be coal Yeludu, with a brush he is writing. When it's a steel style, when he's writing on copper, copper, it makes a deep impression on the surface. It is known as Kannadrith. They are known as Kannadrithalar and Kolarithalar, two types of scribes for writing the Tamil language. So when the Aryans saw these things, they thought they don't know the word for Yeruth, Ilakku. Ilakku dal has become Likna in Hindi. It is luck in Gurjati. Ilakku, the luck is very near to the Tamil word Ilakku. And then it becomes lik, Likna in Hindi. So, Northern languages and South Indian languages are not different in those days. Prakrit language was known as Northern Tamil. What does that mean? Hindu script was a common script throughout the Tamil. It's a pan-Indian script. And then the Tamil Brahmi script is a reformed script. Aindranar, the great grammarian who lived prior to Tulgapya, he reformed the Hindu script. And he is the first reformer, and he invented the Tamil Brahmi script. He is, he, the important feature of the Tamil Brahmi is putting dot on the consonant. It is not found in Indus Valley civilization. So what happened? Uh, Aindranar was a poet who lived around 1800 BC, he reformed the Indus script and he gave the people the new type of writing system called Tamil Brahmi, but Tamil Brahmi, a southern Brahmi, was known as Tamili. The Pali people called it Damili. Damili, Damili is the original name. And then for adding Sanskrit words and give the right correct pronunciation, the Pali people added some 11 letters. 
Prakrit and Tamil Brahmi, Northern Prakrit and Southern Prakrit, Tamil, had only 30 letters. That is 12 vowels and 18 consonants. They are static and standardized, whereas the Sanskrit letters were not static or standardized. During the Pali people, during the Buddha period, they wanted to write Pali. There, there are so many Sanskrit words. So with these 30 letters, they could not write it. So they added two Varga letters, ka, ka, ga, the aspirated voice stop, and then the ga, the voice stop, five, five, ten, and then one, ha. So it, it increased into 30 to 41. Pali language had only 41 letters. And then Shiva Sutra, it had, he included r, r, l, r, 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 in the vowel series. Linguists will not agree that, accept that. Traditional grammars will not accept that. R, r is after all a consonant. How can he include it in the list of vowels? No, but it was the, it was the feature, innate feature of the Sanskrit language. So, Shiva Sutra had a r among the vowel count, vowels and it, it, the number increased from 41 to 42. Then our great, great, then our came our great man, great scholar, who? Panini. He thought these 42 letters are not sufficient to write Rigvedic slogans. So he added nine more letters and it became 51 for Sanskrit language. So what does it mean? The Sanskrit letters were not standardized, not static. And then Bharati we have born recently, they include a tra. Now it has become 52. And some other Sanskrit has increased to 40, 64. Somehow Sanskrit is a rich language. So what does it mean? Before Panini, the language is Prakrit had 30 letters and Pali has 41 letters. Man who is proficient in Prakrit can read Tamil words because they have common script. Roman script is a common script for entire Europe. Just like that, Brahmi, Tamil Brahmi, Tamiji, which had only 30 letters, it was a common script throughout India. So, any Nardian, whether it's Kashmir or Benares, can read Tamil words. Tulgapim, they can read it. A Tamil, Irango or Igal or Tiruluvar can read North Indian Prakrit words because the script is the same. So, Panini had every possibility to read Tulgapim and Aindra grammar. Aindra grammar was the common grammar throughout India. The Katantra grammar of the Parakit says, I have, we have followed Aindra grammar. Pali grammar, Kachayana, says, we have followed Aindra grammar. The Tibetan grammar, San Chupa, it says, we have followed them. Tulga Pier says, we have followed Aindra grammar. Kanada, the old Kannada grammarian says, we have followed Aindra grammar. Everybody followed Aindra grammar. There is one Kalapa Chantra Vyakarana in Prakrit. That, pra, that Prakrit says, it mentions the name of Aindra grammar and says that it is a Tamil grammar. Taranath, a great historian of Tibet, says Aindra is a Tamil grammar. Buddha Jataka stories say Buddha at the age of 16, he studied Aindra grammar. Buddha studied Tamil grammar. I said Tambaya, a scholar from Silvan, he has written a book, Psalms of Sai or Saint. In that book, he says, the Chinese translation of Lalita Vistara says Buddha studied Tamil. So Tamil was taught in North India. Tamil was the lingua franca. It was the official language of entire India. So kindly don't underestimate the Tamil language and the Tamil people. Now, now I want to come to the subject. I presented a paper in the World Tamil Congress. In the new methodology and key 
to decipher the indescript. The, 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 the research paper runs about 30 pages. I gave a power presentation too. And then yesterday I gave a talk. I want to show some visions from CDs. You see that uh, I will explain whatever I have to say for them. Uh, you, see, you see this, how the seal looks like. This is the seal and that is the ceiling. A merchant will have some goods for exporting or some will be imported. The king will put a tax for that. He will collect tax. They will put a seal. This is the seal. In Tamil we say idumuttirai. Some clay or something will be based on the bundle or parcel. He will put a seal on it. You see a, a, a villager is raised with some cattle there in the seal. He is he's a tall fellow. The average of the Tamilians in those days in this valley was six feet. There was some sand coal means a scale, foot scale of nine inches. Like each sand a span means eight span will be the height of a man. If you multiply nine inches with eight, the average is six. The average height of the Indus Valley people was six feet. They were, they were strong and well built in those days. We see such a man in the uh, seal. Next one, please. This one is from Adi Chanalur. It is sent to a Tamil deity and it is the paddy field. So paddy was cultivated in those days. Next one, please. Next one. Ah, these are the pottery pieces. They bear the Indus signs. In Harappan, Mahidero, we come across such potteries, potsheds. And in Adi Chanara also, we come across such potsheds. Next one, please. Uh, this is Adi Chanalu. You see the broad walls. Sometimes there are uh, double walls. One wall, and middle there will be a gap about some six inches or one, one, one foot. And then there is the next wall. This double wall protected them from heat. The heat will affect the first wall. In the middle you cannot pass on. So our room will be cool. How advanced they were in the building construction. Such a double wall buildings are seen even in Harappa and Mangjadaro and we see in Adi Chanalu. Uh, next one. Uh, you see this picture. If we come across unicorns, especially in Mohangaro seals, most of the seals have unicorn. Those traders belong to that sect, we think so. But the, the unicorn idea was, was alive in South India too. In South Kandra, in Karnataka, each and every village temple, the people, uh, they gave to the temple on a particular occasion, on a festival occasion, they make a wooden cow with one horn. Such wooden cow, wooden uh, uh, anicans, unicans were offered to the temple. Hundreds and thousands together. If you go to Mysore University, there is a folklore museum in Mysore. In that folklore museum, you can see hundreds of wooden unicorns. In, in Salem district, the way to Madhyasran Hills, there is a village Kaveri Puram. Once in a year, they celebrate the first plowing ceremony. ceremony. It is known as Ponnair Kattudal. Once in a year, in the beginning of the year, the villagers will start plowing. This is the first, first plowing. This is a festival. So, the whole village go to the temple and two youngsters, unmarried youngsters, will be asked to come and yoke the plow and one will wear a turban with two horns and other will have one horn even today. 
if you go in the month of August, on a particular Saturday, they celebrate it. A villager, the owner of the land will till the land. And a panan, preferably, you know, call him a scheduled caste people. They are the experts in Karnataka music at Bharatanatyam. In those days, the Sarah king will send his chariot to bring them. Now they are uh, downtrodden people. They are untouchables. <laughs> those people, they are those panas. Panas means singers. What type of singers? Two types of singers. Syria singers and Peria singers. There are seven surams, Sarigama Patani. Sarigama Pata, from three strings to six strings. It is serial. Tanana, tanana, sariga, sariga, three strings. Sarigama, sarigama, sarigama. You see that? that? Four strings. Sarigama Padani is a Sampurna Raga of seven strings. They are known as Periyal. Three Laganda Yard Parner and Thirupan Alvar in Saiva and Vaishnava Kai. They were Harijans, but they were very good singers praising God Shiva and Lord Krishna. During the religious period, we come across such people. So, that the Harijan caste people will come, he will sing a song praising the God and all that. Uh, he will, he will, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the youngsters will, will draw the plough. That is the family there, even today, that Unicorn system, the, they are still following. Unicorn is known to South India, so in the civilization spread from, ascended from South to North. Though, so far the archaeologists dig the land, dig the earth, dig the earth, that too they know. They don't want to carry out a field work, find out, find out truth from the social life of the people. No one has come far to write the social history of India. No one has come far to write the cultural history of India. Even in social history, social life and cultural life, the Indus Valley civilization's remnants are embedded, 100%. So I request the scholars to carry on work in field work to rewrite and reconstruct the social history of Indians and cultural history of Indians. And next one, please. You see, Padayas, the villages, in Tamil Nadu, in North India, during the Pongal festival on Jallikattu day, they draw human figures like this. In Indus Valley, the human figure, human figure stand for the phonetic value A, A. If two figures were right side by side, two short vowels make a long vowel. The long vowel A means A, U, Kau. Even Telugu also, Avu means cow. So, on the second day, on the delicate day, Pongal day, they make the markings like this. Next one, please. So, Indus Valley affiliation has got deep-rooted in the social and cultural life of the people in India. And next one, this is the six-stringed or five-stringed. Six-stringed. Yes, music. Music instrument. So, the industrialization people were good in music. They were very good experts in music. The Panas, even though the Pana community is there in Orissa, in large numbers they are living. The Pana communities will, Tamil Sangam, whenever once in a year, the poets will compose so many poems, that poems will be carried out by the Panas. They will, the king will offer them elephant. They ride on elephant, even though to Kashmir or Uttar Pradesh or anything. Throughout India they will go and go on singing the Tamil songs. The people offer him whatever they have. They, be, they bring, they, they go as poor people and come as rich people. The Panas. The, whenever uh, the Rigvedic people came to India, the Das, they saw these Panas are collecting so much. That is why they also started singing Veda songs in Sanskrit. Whoever comes and sings, people do something, offer something. That is why Veda is protected.
It's a source of living for them. She knows this. For Panas, singing Tamil songs is a source of living. And for the Rigvedic people, reciting the Rigvedas was a source of living. That is why it didn't forget it. Still maintain it. Uh, next one, you go on. Uh, this one is the is the Harappa fort. There are four, on the four directions, there are four gates. Then semicircular moat is there. It is Agadi in Tamil. Especially, the moat will be around the uh, fort, usually. Around the fort, there will be a moat. But in Indus Valley civilization, only at the gate, they have uh, this semicircular moat. This type of construction is the part and parcel of the South Indian people. If you go to Kanyamari district and Vilam Godu Talu, you see in every village, you will construct the lake or a pond in the semicircular shape. Because when the water current comes very fast, uh, some cracks may happen in the wall if it is straight. If it is in the semicircular form, no crack will happen the water will bend like this. So this is a technique they followed. So it is still followed in the Kanyamiri district. So the Kanyamiri Tamilians settled in North India. And then please. This is this uh, dice which Jaguni, Saguni in Mahabharata used. You see the one, two, three signs are the Indus Valley signs to represent the numerals. First one is one, second one is two, and third one is three, and the fourth one is blank. Next one. It was excavated near Madurai, the State Department, uh, State Archive Department of Tamil Nadu. Then Narana Kasin was the director. He brought up to the notice of the scholars. And then Kasi Pandi and the Chief Secretary at Andhra Pradesh, he went to a village in Karnul in Kanmavadakal village and there was a Shiva temple and there under a banyan tree he found this big brick. There were some inscriptions. He took a photo and published in his book. He asked me, I, I was reading all the inscriptions, so he invited me to Andhra Pradesh. I had been to Hyderabad. He showed me, asked me to read it. I read it as Kaling Nakka Nandi. Kaling Nakkan was a person. His son is Nandi. So, he, uh, in his name it was, it was put, it was brought to the temple. And then, next please. Oh, it's gone somewhere. Uh, this is the burial. What happens? The people of Indus Valley lived up to 120 years, whether you believe or not. The grandfather will see the face of his grandfather. Grandfather is Spartan in Tamil. The father of grandfather is called Putan. And the father, grandfather of grandfather is known as Wotan. It is in Tamil. Spartan is male Putan. Putan is male Wotan. Wotan is male Uravil. If you go to a house, you can see the grandfather and the father of grandfather and grandfather of grandfather. The Putan is the father of grandfather. He is Putan and Puti. It is Buddha Buddhi in Hindi. You know that. So, <laughs> Buddha Buddhi comes from Tamil, not from Sanskrit. So, for all the most of the core words, words of day-to-day uh, -day usage, and the basic verbs in all the Northern Indian languages happen to be Tamil. Why it is not Sanskrit? If Sanskrit you say, Atmatvam Bruhi, tell the truth. Bruhi is a basic word, a common man uses. Could you find in any North Indian languages, a village or some, someone using the word Bruhi? Boliye, Bataiye, they use only these words. All the North Indians use the word Pani. They are not using the word Jal, Jalam. Pani is nothing but the Tamil word Parugunir. In Telugu it is Parugunirlu. Osar knows that. <laughs> Telugu Parugunirlu, Tamil Parugunir, it 
speaks Spanish in Hindi. So all the North Indian words, you have to see the etymology, the root is embedded in Tavidin. So North Indian language all took their form from the South Indian language. They had the South Indian origin of North Indian language. So calling the North Indian language Indo-European is quite funny. How many European words are there in North Indian language? Could you tell one or two words? It is a global rule that any language family can borrow only nouns from one language to another. Where we can't borrow. We have borrowed so many English words, pen, pencil, the table, everything from English. Have you borrowed any verb from English? Can you, can you speak in Hindi? White Veta Hai, White Vetega, could you use like that? If you take a verb from other language family, it will not conjugate in three tenses. You had to add an auxiliary verb. Wait, wait, karta hai. Wait, karega. My wait, karu. So, the auxiliary verb kar, that conjugates in three tenses. So, Aryan words, European words, European verbs are not at all found in Indian languages. So, only the verbs Dating case markers, they determine the parenthood. Loan words will never determine the parenthood, parenthood of, the, of a language. What about Jones, William Jones, the judge? He said, the North Indian languages, he called North Indian languages Indo-European. Why? In those days, they, they, they concentrated only on typology. Typology means they saw only nouns. The Sanskrit words are thrust upon the Indian word language. All are nouns. What are maybe? All are nouns. Jones and Max Muller saw nouns in North Indian languages. They form majority. They didn't look into the verbal system or the grammatical substratum. They didn't do it. What I mean by grammatical substratum is dative class marker in North Indian is ko, Ram ko diya. Tamil Ramanuku Kodutan. The same Ku Deshka, which is found in Uriya language. Tumbanku Danyavad in Uriya means thanks to you in Uriya language. There Tumbanku. The Ku is the dating guest master in Tamil. It is there. And there is in Trilochan Singh Bedi, a good friend of mine of Punjab, Punjab language. He told me in West Punjabi there are some villages. They use the, they don't use the case master go Ramko Diya. They use the uh, case, Tamil case marker Ku, Uskodi, Uskudia, Ramkudia. What does it mean? People cannot be borrow the grammatical feature like case markers from one language to other. What about the sixth creative case marker? This statement is we say Shiva Yanamaha. Ya is the case marker. Salutation to Shiva. Could you find any North Indian languages using the native maskas Ya? All the people say Ram Kodiya. Could you find any person Ram Ya Diya? If North Indian languages come from Sanskrit, if Sanskrit is the mother of North Indian languages, all the North Indians should use the Ya native case marker. Ram Ya Diya, they should say, instead of Ram Kodiya, so you have to guess and understand. I am an unbiased scholar. I want to tell the truth. I want to emphasize the truth. I want to establish the truth. That is my mission of life. And then uh, let us go to the next one. You see the uh, Harappa figurine of clay, clay figurine. You see the turban. The man is Sudhi a Tamilian turban, South Indian turban. Huh? It is not North Indian turban. This turban is not North Indian turban, not Rajasthani turban. A pure Tamilian turban. It is a Harappa figurine. A Tamilian turban is also like this. If a man has a turban, he is an Indian. If a man has bangles, if a woman has bangles, she is a Tamil Indian woman. This is a Tamil woman. Tamil woman means Indian woman. In spite of a racial mixation and all that, 
These are later on uh, happenings. I am seeing, I, I, I am taking all of you from 5,000 years back. The ancient is period, I am taking all of you. So, a man wearing turban denotes that it is an Indian or a Tamilian. A woman wearing wangles and a tilak on her forehead shows that he is 100% Dravidian or pre aryan Indian. Next, please. If time is given, I will not uh, speak beyond the time. Uh, now come to the disagreement of the industry. Previously I told, there are all cultural and social similarities between the Indus people and the rest of Indian people. So as to come to the conclusion that Indus civilization was a pan-Indian civilization and the Indus script was a pan-Indian script. Culturally and socially, they are they were similar. The, now I am speaking about the new methodology and key to decipher the Indus script with verification of correct reading. Next, please. Now I want to explain you how I was able to find out a methodology key to read all the 5,000 seals and inscriptions. They all happen to be the Tamil words of merchants, deities, chiefs, etc. And then, uh, what is the methodology I followed? Dr. Ayurveda Mahakaji even Asko Parpolo established that is syllabic type of writing. But they didn't try to read it as syllabic type of writing. They started reading as pictograph. That is why Ayurveda Mahakaji and Asko Parpolo failed in their attempt. For example, I will say, there is a fish figure in industrial civilization. Uh, on right side and left side, there are three strokes or three short lines on the right side and three short lines on the left side. On the whole, there are three, six strokes, six lines. In the middle, there is a fish figure. Uh, Asko Parpola read it as six fish, six stars, six stars, Kartikeya and Kartike Natchatra. He dragged it to some other, somewhere. That too he took, there are five signs in a word. You have to completely read the five signs. How can you read one sign and say that it is a, I have deciphered it? If it is, Krishna. In the last line, word, a letter is Na. If you read the Na alone, how can you say that you have deciphered it? It's not funny. <laughs> I asked Arthur Parpola in person in 1954, 1974, in the World Archival Congress at Delhi. He tell, this is our way. You have your own way, say that. Yes, I had my own way, I was able to decipher it. So, what Ayra Magan did, there was one man some bearing some something on two shoulders. He's got his, he's bearing something, this is Bara, Bharata, Bharata, just let's take the diagram of his own according to his mythologies. First, a decipherer should find out who used it, for what purpose he used it. Merchants used it. Traders used it. So, the name of the traders must be there. Sir Walter, uh, sir, some scholars, in the research scholars, to openly told that seals must bear the names of the merchants or some human beings. So, what all I deciphered are the proper nouns, names of some deities, names of the chiefs, nothing but that. And then, uh, the methodology I followed is, even without a rosa tartone, in the script can be deciphered. How is it? If once you decide who are the people who lived there, all the scholars unanimously come, come to the conclusion that Indus Valley civilization belongs to Dravidians. If once the speakers are decided, the civilization decided, we can easily find out what language they spoke. That if it is Dravidian, they must have spoken a Dravidian language. Then the words must have Dravidian word structure. What is the word structure? 
கோ டு ஐந்திரன் ஆர் தமிழ் கிராமர் அண்ட் தொல்காப்பியம் கிராமர் தே சே டுவெண்ட்டி டூ லெட்டர்ஸ் அக்கர் இன் தி இனிஷியல் பொசிஷன் ஆஃப் அ தமிழ் வேர்ல்ட் எ டெவிடின் வேர்ல்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் லெட்டர்ஸ் இந்த ஃபைனல் பொசிஷன் ஆஃப் இக்யூட்டர் பன்னீர் உயிரும் கசத்திர பம்பைய ஞங்க ஈர் ஐந்து மெய்யும் மொழி முதல் கிராமேட்டிக்கல் தேவ் டிசைடிட் அண்ட் தென் தே கம் டு த நெக்ஸ்ட் பாயிண்ட் வாட் ஆர் தி இனிஷியல்ஸ் வாட் ஆர் தி ஃபைனல்ஸ் இன் அ வேர்ல்ட் and then what are the medials in a world especially constant cluster or gemination if it is a sanskrit word of that double triple consonant cluster strot strange strange triple consonant cluster in if this in indus valley is dividian you never come across a triple consonant cluster in any one of the seal we come out to cross identical consonant cluster i will show it at that that following this method of tulgapier and aindranar applying the grammatical rule word structure rule to indus valley civilization i was able to trace out which are the consonant cluster in the middle of the seal which of a word and which are the finals so i got successful and then then next one please so i have explained the methodology what i have followed he is aindranar who lived in 1800 bc he is tolga pier who lived in 9th century bc next up is uh seals are uh, repeated seals 67 seals repeat 500 times 112 seals occur only once 200 seals occur only below 5 on the whole the core signs which occur every now and then are 35 out of the 35 5 are alternative signs 30 are the basic signs this is this figure is given in the book of the atlascopar pola so core signs are 35 five are repeated signs the 30 are the, in the 30 our tamil grammar says 12 are vowels and 18 are nouns the 30 are invariable so the tamil grammatical definition the tamil has 30 letters that indus valley seems has got 30 basic letters and then next one please ha ah, now come here i told two short vowel will make a long vowel in what in indus civilization you see this z like marks the z like mark is o in brahmi those who are accustomed to reading brahmi scripts will know Uh, whether it is ashoka north northern brahmi or southern brahmi this is z mark z symbol denotes the phonetic value o if two phonetic values are written side by side two short vowel with long vowel you have to read this o o long so see the swasti there are two z marks cross each other vertically and the middle plus is him in so indus valley civilization according to this environment the plus mark denotes the phonetic value him wo him wom how i read it it is wom where it was excavated it was first excavated in mehergar near the kabul river in afghanistan the german and french team who excavated the site bakhergar they have dated it as 6000 bc to 7000 bc so wom was there in this valley civilization it was a writing system a complete word is there in 6000 bc so the first written record in the world is wom tamil letter o tamil o is the first word discovered as the earliest type of writing system so tamil language has the antiquity of 6000 plus 2000 8000 years ago tamilians wrote a language indus people wrote a language and then the above is co let us see later on next one please the wom re i read is correct i i have verified means in indus valley there are some proper nouns woman woman is a proper noun still used in sindhi people if you go to pakistan or india the sindhi will people are than either woman 
Sindhis will have that name. The unsuffix masculine suffix is there. Raman means Raman, Bhiman means Bhiman, Ani is there like Tamil. But in North India, they deleted the masculine gender suffix An. Raman will become Ram, Bhiman will become Bhim. <laughs> they avoided the An suffix in North India. In later Brahmi. But in the earlier times, Hindi language still retains it. And then this one you see that. This is a Shiva, earlier Shiva figure in Indus Valley. There is a Mohanjadara seal number, it's also given there. What is the number? Uh, three, 311. Mohanjadara seal number. Shiva, the, his body is shown as a, as a tiger. And you see his waist. He is wearing the skin of the uh, tiger. This is described in our Agamas and in the Saiva literature. Shiva is wearing the skin of the tiger in his waist. So this is a complete Shiva figure. And what is written in the script? Two short oval make a long oval. Yen Anangan. What I have read it. Yen means father. Yen Ravan. Father is known as Yen in Indus Valley period. It has become Yisan in nowadays. Nowadays it has become Isa. Even Santal people they call their father as Isa. Indus Valley word they are still using. Caldwell said the Sitel languages belong to the Dribian family. So I have been to Finnish, Finland. There was one Hanupan Hakola, a great professor who has made some research, a comparative research on Tamil and Finnish language. He said Isa is father in Finnish. Not only Finnish, Manu, only Hungarian, and all the Finnish languages. They use the word Isa. It refers to a father. So the earliest form in this valley retains E N. You see, the first one is short E. If two short, short E's are written, it has become long oval E, E N. And next one, please. And then, please wait. I told uh, the medials. There will be identical constant cluster or geminations. You see, in this one, Kanachan. Kanan is a proper name even in Sindhi nowadays. The Jod the persons of Pakistan will have the name Kanan. And then it will shorten as Khan, Aga Khan, Maulat Khan, Daulat Khan, just like that. The Indus Valley Kanan has become Khan. Kanan is there even in nowadays in the, among the Sindhi people. So, in the lower figure, we see Kanachan, the oblong round shape. Cha, cha, icha is the identical constant cluster. In the above here, Nappan, the, the figure, pa under pa, ippa. So, identical constant occurs in the middle portion, the Tulga appear, and the Indra grammar approve it. Next one, please. Tatra, Gitra, Patra is not Tamil usage. Muttu, Pearl is Tamil. If you change it as Mukta, it is Sanskrit. So it is not identical concept cluster. Mukta is not identical concept cluster. Muttu is identical concept cluster. And then, uh, given the vowels which occur in this civilization, first one, man's figure A, two man's figure become A long, E, E long, U, U long, A, A long, I. Uh, this one you have to observe. This, this type of writing, I, the diphthong, is still retained in North Indian languages, in South Indian languages, even in Tulgapya. If you write Chennai in Hindi, how will you write it? Channa, and then put E, vowel E. Uh, the Ya, the semi vowel is not occurring in between. Na yi means we write semi vowel ya in Tamil. But Tulga Pier says na yi dog, na, and then vowel yi you write it, he says. Who says? Tulga Pier says, North Indian languages are writing a yi mother, a, and then vowel marker yi they add that ya, the semi vowel is not there. So the Indra grammatical grammar is still maintained in North Indian languages. Ai, Ai, mother came. Ai also they write, they don't write the semi-vowel ya in between. 
So Nai also twelve gap year says. So the grammatical rules are still maintained even after four thousand years in the North and South Indian languages. They are the one language area in those days. And Chennai means also right in Hindi as Chenna and E. It's pronounced as Chennai in Hindi even nowadays. Next one, please. This has a consonant. Kana, Chanya, Tana, Tana. And next one. Uh, this is a Yarala, Varala, Rana. And then. Next one, please. This is a constant clusters. Ka, Ka, the cup like uh, figure. Kalayam. Kalayam means cup, drinking water vessel. Drinking vessel. Kalayam, Ka, stands for Ka. This is the pictorial, uh, all the world language, letters in the world languages come out from the pictograph. All the languages were written in the pictograph form in the and once in days. Although there are 1000 and uh, 89 types of, 1092 types of uh, scripts are there in the world for all the languages are written in according to Voices of Stone written by Double Offer. He says there are 1192 types of scripts in the world. So this, this ka is an outcome of a pictorial then. Ikka, uh, itta, itta, just like that. And next one. You see I everything in my book. There is Indus Valley Tamil Civilization. It is an e-book. You can Amazon, you can taste it, you can read it. Indus Valley Tamil Civilization. It is an e-book available. And next one. You see, Indus Civilization's writing system has paused seven stages. Tamilians had first Tamil Sangam, second Tamil Sangam, third Tamil Sangam. Indus Valley writing system belongs to the Tamil second Tamil Singham, Singham period. Uh, it was started by the king Ven Ther Chelian. He was a king during the period of Indus Valley civilization. During the first Tamil Singham, the Pandya king's name was Kai Sina Varudi. He was the first king who started the Tamil Sangams. And then uh, this one belongs to the pictographic writing system of the ancient Tamils, the pre Harappan period writing system. We can call it as pre Harappan system. It is, first one is fish. There are four strokes. You have to read it as saw. And then any animals will be read as na, nasal, nasal sound. So, sanan is the name. I have disappeared it. So, we have got one or two pictographic writing system, the first system of the first Tamil Sangam. And then, the next stage, every letter will be written as a double line. This is a double line letter. The third type of writing system of the industry is writing the syllabic type and mixing the pictograph also. And mixing the, you see in the middle, yeah, a figure of a bear. We call it William Karadi in Tamil. That is, a, is a, he wrote it as a pictograph itself. All the other are syllabic type of writing system. And beyond that, there is only E. This Il, William, Il, and E, Uli, William. So it reads Nanathan Oliyan Amban. The name of the person who had it. And then this is a ta and o. If you want to write to, you write ta, ta consonant, and then add vowel. You have to read this, this type of uh, vowel and uh, consonant written side by side, it will become a vowel consonant. And then the fourth stage, adding strokes to the consonant. Vowel consonant, vowels. Vowel markers will be added to the consonant and you can read this kaka, ki, ki, ku, ku, ke, ke, like that. This is vowel consonant. In most of the languages, it is vowel consonants. If K means, it's a vowel consonant. It's not, we don't pronounce ik in English. Ta, they don't pronounce it. Whereas in Tamil, ik, ich, it in. Pure consonants we have. As I grafted, there are three class fields, vowels, cons pure consonants, and vowel consonants. Three types of consonants. But Panini deleted the pure consonants, Tamil Brahmi. 
Indus civilization writing system passed the seven stages. And next one, please. And then the method of adding vowel marker to the consonant. The scribes have totally followed the Indus Valley system down the Brahmi system. What is it? If you want to ka or ki, if you write ka or ko, we will put marker above. You see the Brahmi script here. This is Brahmi second one. They are adding marker above. For ko also adding marker above in Brahmi. This is the Indus script. Ka and ko, they add markers above. On the top of the or on the side side of the consonant, they add. The method of adding vowel markers to the consonant is same in the in, in the Brahmi and the Indus script. This type of research others have not done. I have completely applied the Tamil grammatic, grammatical structure to that of the Indus Valley Civilization. And then for adding key, ku, even in Hindi and all that, we add vowel marker below the script, like to write ku, ku, whether it's Kannada, Telugu, all the Indian languages. You add the vowel marker u to the consonant, I really rest ku. ku. Uh, that is the weather in, in, in Brahmi. In Indus Valley Civilization, also, people added the ku marker, ku marker below the consonant. Kindly observe this. How much related they are. The Brahmi writing system and the Indus Valley writing system is one and the same. The scribes have followed the same system. They don't want to change it. The form that they would have changed the form of the consonants to vowels. The method of adding vowel markers, they never changed. And then for say, and T also you see this. In Tamil Brahmi, on the right hand side, you put some cross marks on the left to give the mark key, key, key. On the right hand side above, you will add the vowel marker to write key, key in all the Indian languages, including Tamil. In Indus Valley also, they put a cross mark. You see this last one, T. It is T in Indus Valley. They put a cross mark. It raises and bends on the right hand side. So the method of adding vowel markers to the consonant is constant and the same. This we have to thank the scribes who have retained the method of writing system. And next one, please. Uh, next one, you go on. Time is short. The next one I wanted to say is, if you want Raman or Lakshman, the masculine gender marker will not be written as a separate entity. They will be combined. Even in Prakrit language, Rajan is used. Masculine gender marker is there in the Prakrit, but it is not found in Sanskrit. You say Raj, Raj, Raja. But Prakrit language, whether it is Paisachi Prakrit or Pracha Prakrit, all the Prakrit are used, the unsuffix invariably, Tamil also is invariably. And then in Tamil Nadu, there was a Mongolian inscription in which there was a certain type of a writing system. The scribes followed from the Indus Valley civilization. A few scribes followed this type of system. The unsuffix will be written as a separate. You see this? Kadala An. Kadala, the, the next two letters are An. The An suffix is written separately in Tamil inscription. That is the same thing in Indus Valley Civilization. You see the Indus Valley Civilization, Mohanjadaro 258, seal number. Thingalan Pannapad. First three letters stand for Thingala. And then Two, mar two strokes and then a uh, letter, a Z like a rectangular letter. That is stands for un. The un suffix is written separately. 
These are some few exceptions. The scribes have blindly followed the ancient system, but in other, uh, most of the majority of the descriptions, it is not written separately. It is clubbed together. Kannan, Murugan, Govindan, Rajan, etc. That will not be. In few cases, the scribes have followed the ancient Indus Valley civilization type of writing system and this has occurred in Tamil Brahmi inscription too. So if you compare the writing system of Indus Valley scripts and the Tamil Brahmi script, they, are, they coincide. And then, next one please. This is Shiva, you see this. Avvai is a name in Tamil which means mother. The, what is the masculine gender form of it? It is Avvan. But we have, we, have never, we have never come across such word. Even modern Tamil, ancient Sangam Tamil, we have not heard the name Avvan. We know Avvai, Avvai mother, but in Telugu it is Avva grandmother. Avvai mother, the masculine gender form is Avvan. Grammatically it is right, but practically it is not used. Even Sangam literature. But that Avvan occurs in the Shiva seal there. Ko Avvan is right. Ko Kuvadu, Kodu, Ko means mountain. Avvan means father. Bettaya in Kandra, Kondappa in Kannada, Malayappan in Tamil, Kunnachan in Malayalam. So, Shiva is the god residing at a mountain top. So, this is Ko Avvan written above in the inner seal and uh, Dr. Rajan the archaeological professor of Pondicherry University, he, 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 he discovered a hero stone in Puliman Kombai, in village. That is the Tamil Brahmi inscription in Puliman Kombai of a hero stone. Here it is written, Avvan um, Padavan. So Avvan Padavan is found in the Tamil, Tamil Nadu village in a hero stone. So even in Sangam PJ, this word was there. So I verified my reading is correct. I doubted. Avvan we have not heard of. He could not be a name of a person. He could not be denoted a male, female, masculine gender. I thought so. But I found this one in the Brahmi Tamil inscription at Puriman Kombai. I ascertain that Avvan is a word known to the Tamils and the Indus Valley people, so my reading is correct. And then, next one. This is Thingalan Pannappan. Thingalan is not found in Tamil Nadu. Tamil literature is a proper name, but it is found in Indus Valley civilization, but still it is a name among the Maharashtra Harjins, there are Dalits. <laughs> One huddle race athlete, his name appeared in the Hindu, Hindu newspaper. His name was Tingalaya. He was a huddle race athlete. He got awarded and all that. So Tingalaya is still in usage. Indus Valley proper name is still there in India. So, the Indus Valley civilization is a pan-Indian civilization and my reading is correct. The next one. Ah, I am taking so much time. Now, I want to bring to you, bring to your notice, very, very important discovery. What is it? Rick Willis, a scholar, I don't know which country he belongs, he went to Pakistan and uh, he purchased the copper plates and all that, whatever the vestiges or remnants found in Pakistan. The village people, they collected something from the uh, 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 excavation sites. They will be having their house. If any foreigner comes for ten dollars or hundred dollars, they sell it. Just uh, request is purchased nine copper plates. In one copper plate, there were thirty-four signs. A, com a compound sentence, a full message was there. He brought it to Delhi. He met Vasanth Shinde, the former vice chancellor of Delhi University. 
Vasant Sinde saw it. He told it might be the pre-Brahmi script, but no one was able to read it. But applying my methodology and key, I started reading. It was a message. It speaks about a shipwrecked sailor. He was only he was the only survivor. His name was Nakkaniyan. In Sangantam is there was a Nakkanayar, Nakkanan, Nakkanan, Nalkanan. Nal means good. A good-eyed person. Nal is nak even in Punjabi language. Nal nang means gundu good in Tamil. Nang will become nek in Hindi in Punjabi. Nek admi means a good person in Punjabi language. So even in Punjabi words, they have to find root only in Tamil. And then what happened to this person? This Nakkanian he is the only survivor, and he voyaged in a ship built by Kalanna. Kalanna was the person in Indus Valley who had a ship building yard. He is the proprietor. The ship was built by Kalanna. Who was that Kalanna? Kalanna was a very good friend of a native king. His name was Tan Kavigai Pannan. Where did the king live? He queued in Kunayattam. It was a capital city of the a little king during the Indus Valley. A proper place name is found as Kunayattam, and the king's name is found as Tan Kavigai Pannan. Was a king, and he has a good friend, a shipbuilder Kalanan, and who travelled, who joyed in the ship. Nakkaniyan came back. This is a say, mass. This is a matter found in that in the seal. I read it now. Kona yatham tan kavige pannan punayan kalanan panni vachcha kappal kavind amindu vanda nakkaniyan. This is the message. All happened to be Tamil. Punayan is a new word we have not heard in Tamil. It means a friend. Punayan means a friend. We have not come across it. Again, I read it. Kuna yatham tan kavi gay pannan punayan kalanan panni vachcha kappal amindu vandha nakkaniya. So a great passage, a great passage is up to now. There are one thousand and fifty-six sites pointed out by the scholars, the scholars. There are. 1056 in the sites are there. Only 96 sites have been dug out. Activation work is done in only 96 sites. 960 sites have not been excavated in India. In Tamil Nadu also, there are more than 100 sites. Only Adi Chanallur and Kiridi and some one or few places excavation done. If the excavation is carried out in full swing, we will we'll portray the ancient India how it was. The Indian history needs to be rewritten based on the excavation finds, based on the sociological history, based on the cultural history of the Indians. So we, we have a good time now. There are youngsters and good scholars. If a government comes faster to fund, Funding will get will more important truths of Indus civilization. I thank you for all for past you listening for patient listening. Thank you. Uh, this is the mistake done by B.B. Lal, the Director General of Archaeology Survey of Delhi. 
he observed some potsherds, potteries. In one of the potsherds, the line was uh, overwritten line, overrunning line. It, it started from right to left. There was some, some symbol. There was some, some overwriting line, crossing line. It seemed to be written from right to left. He came to the decision, the Indus Valley is written from right to left. It's not good. You should read a complete word. You should read. You read a complete word from right to right, I, I agree with you. No one has come forward to read a complete word. Either Ayurada, Magadevan or Asko Parpala. If there are four signs, you read the, all the four signs in a word. How can you so read a particular one sign and say this is right written from right to right. So observation of uh, the scholars is totally wrong. And further I want to tell you the right to right to right to uh, right writing system was there in during the Indus Valley civilization. All the languages of the Indus language in the world were written from left to right. You, you have to uh, refer to the book, Voices in Stone, written by Double Hoffer. He says, in that book he says, only during 14th century BC, 1400 BC, the North Semitic people started writing from right to left, because he is a leftist. A leftist will draw a line or start writing only from the right. So the writing system of Persian, Arabic and Urdu they followed the system, writing from right to left. Uh, modern Tamil uh, sentences like words and uh, letters came from the Sanskrit. How did it work? How did it work? I'm a road man. I'm 84 now. Uh, how did the modern uh, Tamil letters came into existence between Brahms? Yes. Yeah, it is totally different. That is also a story. No scholar has come forward to write the uh, orthography of the Tamil language. Just like writing the history of a language, some scholars who forward, uh, come forward to write the history of a language. The history of the orthography. Now all the world has a single script. European is only Roman script. The pre-Roman script, no one knows, there are no uh, written materials. Whether it's German or French or Latin. They use a Roman script. Uh, there are no evidences. A written material show the pre-Roman script. It's not the case. But only in Tamil industrialization, we come out seven stages of writing system. Because it is a long tradition, say from 8,000 years to now, for the past 10,000 years, the writing system was there, so a duke was changing because of some reasons. But the present uh, Tamil writing system came into being during the 10th century, the Raja and the Sora period, from 3rd century to 8th or 6th century, some Bhattarithu was there. What tells the means? The industries and the Brahmi script were written as straight lines. Brahmi script will be in the form of straight lines and strokes. The bending the lines was not there, you can't find it. During the Vatrayutta period, before the Pallava period, and after the first century AD, what happened? The three kings were not there in Tamil Nadu. The Tamilian rule came to an end. Then merchants were writing the same, following the system. It was a dark period in, in Kalapura period and all that. We call it a dark period. Who used the language more? Only the merchants. They don't want to write in copper plate. They wanted to write on silk cloth. They call it as patole. They uh, the previously the people were employed in the sculptors. The sculptor will make a seal. He will, he will make
make a figure like Yurikan and all that. At the same time, you write with this uh, steel, steel style and scratching the surface. It is connected to the surface. If you write on pot or uh, copper, it is called connected with all that. The people there during the Sangam period, until the Sangam period, the Kannadita and Kannadita were used. After that, the issuing seals came to an end. Came to an end. The merchants employed the Kannadita, those who used the brush and ink to write on the silk cloth. So a king wanted to send some message to another king. He would use a silk cloth and using a brush and ink, they would start writing. What we are here, the Apadia, artist, not the sculptor. The using the sculptor's survey has come to the end. Using the services of an artist came to be. So, the artist, what will you do? He showed his artistic skill. Don't want to write straight lines. And he will paint the lines. If you in English, you see the style T and all that. There are so many styles in writing, the English letters. This is the talent of the artist. So, this is called Vatrit, bending letters. The Vatrit came to be, and then it came to a sandstone at the solar period, and we now got it later. This is the reason. Because we changed the stripes. The stripes who used iron steel, iron pin to write in those days. We switched over to employ the artist who used the brush and the ink. So that is why the form of Tamil writing system changed. Not only Tamil, they have already and all that they have been changed. Thank you. Thank you, Vipu. I will not go with all these points. Let's say something, bring out something, and publish it. That's all. They never go into the inner details. The habits all over the people in those days. Uh, thank you all. Uh, we have uh, two more small things. Uh, one is uh, we also want to honor. Uh, Gita Thirumalai, who did the translation from the original Tamil book to this uh, English version, how to decipher the Hindu script. Uh, she gave two paragraphs uh, to share with us. Hello everyone, I am Gita Thirumalai, a Tamil lover and the one who was given the proud privilege of translating into English the Tamil original, original of Professor Karl Madhivanan. Professor Madhivanan is an etymologist and a language archaeologist. He has authored a number of books in Tamil and a couple of them also in English in this field. Coming back to me, Tamil being my mother tongue, it was natural for me to get attached to the study of it from my childhood. Also, I was fascinated by the art of translation, Tamil, English and then English, Tamil from a young age. Having known Professor Madhivanan for the past 35 years, I had the occasion to study all his works and that of his mentor late Mulinyayuril Devanaya Pavanar. After going through the works of these two scholars on the origin of Tamil, it is Tamil, its evolutionary stages culminating its attainment of a classical status without the aid of any other language made me believe that the status of Tamil as a mother goddess in my mind. Now I study Tamil in all worshipful rever uh, reverence she deserves as one of the most ancient living languages of the world. Tamil is not only rich in its literary output of merit, but in providing plausible birth roots for almost all native work words found in the Indian languages as well. Also, the birth roots of several English words, the ultimate origin of them are marked as unknown or obscure by that language dictionaries can be found in the garden of old Tamil. Logical etymology is the fourth of Tamil and it stands Tamil in good step. Good step. Professor Madhivanan's book in English translation, which is going to be released here today, 
comes out as a result of this logical and methodical, uh, methodical investigation into the structure of the Hindu language. The Hindu script has been anonymously described as a hard act to crack by the language, by the linguistic scholars. I hope it will draw the attention of not only the scholars but those who are interested in seeing it domestic, demystified as well. And again, every, therefore, request everyone to read through it to condone shortcomings if any they come across in it and mention them in their valuable reviews. I thank Professor Madhivanan, the publishers of the book, and the organizers of today's function in the in the in the United States. For the release of the book, I also thank every one of you who is present here at the function. I wish the function success. So thank you, thank you, Gita Dirmalai for that message. Hi, um, yeah, she's from Hyderabad. Uh, and uh, last, I would like to do the vote of thanks. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, our honorable chief guest, Nimsha. Uh, she accepted accepted our uh, invitation immediately, uh, and. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you so much. It's a big part for us. So, uh, I, I would think the, I worked under, under Nisha uh, when I was working in Chase. Uh, she is very hard working and very well organized. Uh, sorry that I couldn't organize uh, uh, well initially, so it was a bit late. So I'm still landing on this stuff. And so I would like to thank uh, Mohan Dazari as well. He uh, accepted our invitation immediately. Uh, he went to his home and asked that uh, it would be an honor if you could release the book. So he immediately accepted. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mohan. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, my friends here, Mr. Kadubil, Mr. Uh, John, Mr. Saravanan and uh, his wife Yadini who were taking care of the photography work here. Uh, also, Satya for providing us uh, food uh, in, uh, even yesterday. Uh, he gave us uh, the, uh, snacks. And also, I want to thank Biryani Parlar. So they provided us uh, some snacks today. So you could take uh, some snacks. And uh, uh, the last uh, uh, detail is that we have some of his books here, uh, Hindi as well as uh, English translation. Uh, English book is uh, $20 and then uh, Hindi book is uh, ten dollar. Uh, in case uh, if if these books ran out and uh, if you need more, uh, you can register with me and uh, I can send you the books. Um, so uh, also, if you would like to donate, we have the donation details where you could send the, send the money. So thank you, thank you everyone.